Was that title not clear enough? Fun fact, I used to have a beach body, but after a few months, it started to smell, so I buried it. I mean, I just want to make it absolutely clear, I'm here for careers guidance, not therapy. Physiology is not easily tricked. Trying to hack your body, which is smart and adaptable, is not as easy as supplement companies try to lead you to believe. This video is a critique of legal, over-the-counter fat loss supplements that you can buy from any supplement store in a mall when they are open, but don't do that because they're terrible. I would like to thank you for 200,000 subscribers. This channel has never been and still not sponsored, still not trying to sell you supplements and services in every video, just trying to genuinely help people and entertain people. In my last video, I discussed Carlton Loth recommending to his young audience to take fat loss supplements. Like I said, guys have a fat burner once or twice every day. They definitely work. They definitely work. They're really good. It is time for an in-depth scientific explanation of why you should save your money and not buy over-the-counter legal fat loss supplements and instead focus on your training and nutrition, which is not a hack, which is not a shortcut, but it is at the essence of what a fat loss journey should be. With fat loss pills, we see them marketed at both men and women. Don't worry, I've got it all covered. And for comedic purposes, I'm going to reference the guy from the adverts. And no, not the wooden fire, fluffy, warm Christmas adverts. More the type of adverts that make you get Netflix. Getting quality sleep every night is not easy. Mm. And I will bring hilarity from Summer Rae and the fat loss supplements that she promotes. The Eliminator X. The drink. Oh, Nikki wants to help me. This is a supplement website, is it? Okay, phew. Whew, safe for work. Just doing some research, Nikki. Name. Devon. This relationship is moving fast. A BCAA supplement with sodium, potassium, glutamine is apparently the most advanced and potent fat burner. See you, Nikki the robot, if that is your real name, and if you really are that model in the picture. Where, of course, they try to get your name and email through an automated chatbot to then make you hate logging into your email every day due to the trash they keep on sending you. You know the drill. Sustainable and long-term fat loss happens on a per-needs basis. That means that your body burns fat when it needs to as a form of thermoregulation, which is maintained maintaining body temperature and not due to a supplement trying to hack the process. Fat loss supplements are intended to stimulate fat oxidation in the absence of thermoregulatory or energetic demands. Supplements cannot override the basic factors of metabolic control extensively. This would counteract the body's innate efforts to maintain homeostasis. The majority, if not all, studies demonstrating a statistically significant boost in fat oxidation with fat burners also show very small effects which are almost practically trivial. Fat loss, very simplified, is your body burning up fatty acids to create energy for fuel. And so a very simple example is, if we exercise, we're creating an energy demand on the body. And so with fat loss supplements, let's start with scraping the barrel proprietary blends, which are a mixture or a blend of ingredients in a supplement, where essentially you don't know how much of a dosage you are getting. And when it comes to supplement intake, it's not just the quality of the ingredients, it's also the dosage of the ingredients, which are vital as to whether or not a supplement may be effective. And so I'm now going to put you through the pain of showing you a clip from Vince Morf, who actually gives a perfect summary of the problems with prop blends. What's cool is that they don't slap some proprietary blend on the nutrition label, which basically just means that they don't have to tell you what's in it. Oh, and I'm going to put up the ingredients from the fat loss supplement that he sells from Sculpt Nation. What's cool is that they don't slap some proprietary blend on the nutrition label, which basically just means that they don't have to tell you what's in it and also usually means they're using minimal dosages and getting higher profit margins because that's what supplements usually do. That was a twist ending. And so do fat loss pills work? Well, to be fair, this is a nuanced topic. The key issue here is we need to rethink the word work. What does that word work mean? Does a short-term transient observational effect on metabolism mean work? Or indeed, should a longer term, more significant impact on overall fat loss be what we define as work? The problem is the people selling you these supplements are only giving you half of the story. Because yes, some of these substances do have an observed effect on your metabolism. But these are short term effects. When we look over the long term, when we look at how complicated fat loss is as a process long term, these substances are nothing more than a short term jolt to your body. Then in essence, I'm going to argue in this video that they do not work. You can kind of think of fat loss pills as the millennium bug. A lot of hype, nothing serious happened. We have substances such as yohimbine, which does have an evidence base for potentially helping with fat loss. And you take this supplement when you are in a fasted state. We also have legal substances such as caffeine and green tea extract, where there are observed effects on the metabolism. But the issue is how significant are these substances? How much 
of an impact do they have on your body over the long term? Not much. And so here's a good example from Campbell et al. 2016. Although the thermogenic fat loss supplements resulted in an elevation in resting metabolic rate, at this time we are not able to conclude whether this can lead to actual fat loss over time in this population. Future studies should investigate the effectiveness and safety of ingesting the dietary supplement over a longer period of time to determine if reductions in fat mass are observed. And so that's a very good example of where these substances such as caffeine and green tea extract did show an observed effect on metabolism. But when it comes to overall fat loss over a longer period of time, that was not shown. Now, to be clear, these are over-the-counter legal substances. When we're talking about illegal substances, then that's a very different story as yes, they can have a monumental impact, but they also have severe danger to them and they have very sadly led to fatalities. And so under no circumstances should you try to take illegal fat loss supplements. Ultimately, the oxidation of fuels like fat is for the purpose of thermoregulation and or meeting cellular energy needs. Therefore, fuel fat oxidation is on a per needed basis. These fundamental factors of metabolic control cannot simply be overridden by a supplement. But then he mentions that illegal substances are a very different story, meaning it is biologically inefficient to burn through fuel when the body doesn't need to. Physiology is not easily tricked. And also the fact that these fat loss supplements are used in a cyclical fashion where you cycle their use and then stop should be something else for you to think about in terms of how the body can adapt to what you put into it. And so when I see someone like Alpha M talking about how he uses these pills many times per day over a long term period of time, it's very dangerous and irresponsible information. Yes, every single time that you go to bed is an opportunity for you to burn calories. Mm. And this is why I like Burn PM by Sculpt Nation so much. And so Devin is projecting the idea that an increased calorie burn and the quality of your sleep by taking his product will help you with your fat loss journey. Because they have a variety of all natural ingredients that do nothing but help you fall asleep with ease. But, 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 and this is general common sense, a side effect of taking fat loss supplements is insomnia. That's why many of the bottles will tell you to take them a certain amount of time before you sleep. And for example, if you think about something like coffee, you probably don't drink your coffee before you go to bed. And so it's peculiar, but not surprising that Vince is talking about the quality of sleep and his fat loss supplement in the same video. Fun fact, I burn calories from the nightmares that I get watching Vince's information. All I gotta say is sleep well. Mm. Fat loss supplements are intended to stimulate fat oxidation in the absence of thermoregulatory or energetic demands. And so fat oxidation is one step of the fat loss process, essentially where you are burning up fat for fuel in the mitochondria. L-carnitine is one of these supposed fat loss supplements that is meant to help with that process. And I will debunk L-carnitine in a minute. Wait for the debunking. And in addition, if someone is creating energetic demands on their body, for example, exercising and using fat loss pills also, my question to you is, why are you using the fat loss pills also when you're creating energetic demands through your exercise? Why take these extra supplements which are not effective in the long term and actually have a very small impact on your metabolism anyway? Save your money. And so L-carnitine is a supposed fat loss supplement which is very badly communicated to you. It is an example of how supplementing with more of something does not mean more effectiveness within your body. How the theory of something does not necessarily meet the application of something because your body is a complicated vessel. And that's why in essence, we have research to test these theories, introducing L-carnitine for fat loss. And so the strongest research we have into L-carnitine is by Centratel 2012, where it showed a positive effect in overweight cats. I have many overweight cats hanging around my house. I do not think about testing L-carnitine pills on them, however. And so carnitine is a substance that we can take in through food sources. And very simplified, fat loss is a multi-stage process. The first stage is lipolysis, the breaking down of fatty acids from stored fat, triacylglycerol. And these fatty acids are then transported to the cell where they are to be burnt up. And this stage is called beta oxidation, the fat oxidation, the burning up of this fat for energy. And so within the cell, the fatty acids needs to be transported from the cytoplasm of the cell to the mitochondria of the cell. And this is where carnitine comes in. It helps to transport the fatty acids to the mitochondria where it's burnt up. And so you can kind of think of carnitine as a shovel, shoveling those fatty acids into the fire to be burnt up. And so this is 
is where the theory comes in. Well, if you take more carnitine through supplementing it, it will help with fat loss, right or wrong. And there was a study in 2011 by Wall et al, which showed apparently, according to some people, that carnitine was successful in helping with fat oxidation. And many people such as this person and this person will project this research to you as showing you that carnitine is effective. The only problem with that piece of research is it did not measure fat oxidation. It did show that with supplementation, you can increase your levels of muscle carnitine. It did also show that lower intensity exercise may demand more fat for fuel, but it did not measure fat oxidation and Salin explains this. And so in conclusion, L-carnitine is not evidence-based for helping you with your fat loss. You'll see in the fitness industry, these companies promoting super fast fat loss through taking these fat loss pills. That's something that you just need to disregard. And in addition, while we're in the realms of nonsense, you'll see these fitness celebrities or YouTube celebrities Celebrities, for example, telling you that, oh, I tried this fat loss pill and it worked for me. And this is anecdotal information, their personal opinion or their experiences, which is the lowest form of evidence base. And while that's fine to perhaps chat to your friends, or while that's perhaps fine to think to ourselves, when we're talking to a larger, wider audience, we should not communicate in that manner. And in many of these videos that I see on YouTube, these are short-term experiments in themselves. They're a waste of your money. They're a waste of your focus. They're a waste of your energy, pun intended. Finished.